Early on when I started doing the YouTube and FPV thing, I decided to focus on props because they were cheap and easy to acquire. There were so many of them. They were so awful back then. And nobody was talking about what it felt like to fly these props, the various differences in feeling. As I learned about the, the FPV market and the prop market specifically, I learned how incredibly lucrative the prop market in general was, especially back then when the market was so tiny, a fraction of what it is today. At the height of their business back then, I don't know what they're doing now, Dahl, Surveil Zone, Foxy, or whatever you want to call them, they were shipping well over 250, 300,000 sets of props a month. Not, not individual props, sets, that's four props. If they were making even just 25 cents on each set, which they weren't, because you know these things cost almost nothing to manufacture after you make the actual mold, that's a pretty huge income for a small Chinese company, and it really shaped their business moving forward. Uh, Surveilzone, I believe, was the first company to start using the polycarbonate material to make uh, five-inch FPV props, which I have so much thank for because... <laughs> Uh, the props we were using before then were these glass nylon props that would just break if you looked at them too hard. So thank you so much to Surveilzone for kicking that off. But I also think that today, prop companies are kind of making the prop market stagnant or just bland. Because, number one, there's so many companies which you can't do anything about. But number two, every company puts out so many props that it is just mind-boggling and nobody can keep track of all these props. I focus on props and I can't keep track of what's happening. I have so many props, it's ridiculous. Companies just keep sending prototype props, which I love testing and I love giving them feedback for, but come on, can you just focus on a couple of causes, like a couple of specific uses for these props and not make just every single denomination a prop? Well, Azure, does exactly that. They're very different. They have focused on a few select props and they don't put out a new prop every two weeks. So that's why I've decided to give this prop kind of more spotlight than most props these days. I kind of don't focus on props anymore because any prop from the last year and a half is going to be good. They they're, they're all have good attributes. Nothing is perfect. There is no perfect prop. They all have their indications and, and contraindications. And it's whatever you want to fly at that time. So it's entirely personal preference. Additionally, props these days, a lot of them feel so similar. It's really hard to tell them apart unless you fly them side by side. But I'm going to give a, give a whack at this prop. So number one, I want to thank Azure so much for switching to this Ziploc bag from their previous packaging. This Ziploc bag is just so fantastic. I cannot explain how, I mean, I can, but I'm not going to explain how incredible it is that they switched to the Ziploc bag. I, I, I know it's stupid, but whatever. All right, so the prop comes in, or at least the, what they've sent me, is these three different colors. The green color and this uh, red-orange color, which is a fluorescent-y sort of, and the smoke gray color. I personally think that all props should come in a smoke gray or tra semi-translucent gray because it's the closest color to 18% gray. And if you know any photography, you know what 18% gray is. It just doesn't show up so much in video, which is really nice if you don't like props in your video feed and you just happen to be running a frame that has them or you're running low camera tilt and you can't help it. Uh, I personally don't care. I actually prefer my, flop, fly, my props in view. I um, wish I had more time to do cinematic flying, but I barely have time to fly at all. But now let's take a look at the actual prop. So this is the Johnny prop. It is a 5-inch prop. It is not a 4.9-inch prop. It is not a 4.8-inch prop. It is not a 5.1-inch prop. It is a 5-inch prop. Yes, I did verify that against a lot of other 5-inch props. And it is 3.9 grams. That's a pretty impressive weight when you hold it in your hands and you feel the polycarbonate and you realize that, oh, this is not a weak prop. I am not afraid of this prop breaking, bending, causing problems of any sort of that, like anything like that. So that's, that's pretty amazing right off the bat. Any prop that's this low in weight, I would be concerned about durability. Something like the uh, T-Motor T5143, it's not a very durable prop and many other low weight props are just not durable. What you saw flying at the very beginning was this prop, and I just don't get a lot of time to fly. I, I don't have fantastic flight footage. I don't have flight footage worthy of this prop. I am, I am not worthy of Johnny's quality of flight, and I don't really have a lot of time to fly. But I'm gonna show you this other video that um, I'm flying this prop around, and it comes with a big disclaimer. So this park that I fly in now, it's a Los Angeles city park, and uh, drones are illegal everywhere like all over, the whole, all over the whole world. And I have been kicked out of this park twice before. And both times have been from different security guards and they just sat next to me and watched me fly and then just asked me to leave. 
it's been raining like crazy lately, so I, they, I think they realize, and I'm flying in the rain, so I think they realize that it's all mud, there's nobody anywhere, there's, I'm not, I can't cause any harm or problems, nobody can even hear me, but they still kick me out because it's illegal. So I found this road on the side of the hill <laughs> at the park, which I don't even know if it's in the park anymore. And I'm flying here today because they're actually using half the park for parking for a golf tournament that's in the area, whatever. And what I want to say is that I'm, my heart is beating out of my chest as I'm flying here. I don't know why. I have flown in much sketchier situations and been totally fine. But in this instance, I'm actually using a new controller as well, or the QX7 controller, which I'm not used to because my other one broke. And my hands are so shaky, I, I can't even control myself. But when you look at the flight footage, it doesn't look half bad. And I'm showing, I'll tell you why I'm showing you this particular video in a minute. But let's talk about the flight performance and flight feel first. So this prop, the first time you fly it, you notice that it is exceptionally smooth. And it just has, it just has a quality to it that you can't quite put into words, which I'm going to try right now. Let's first talk about the throttle control. The throttle control on this prop is very soft, very mushy, very forgiving, very exact, very exquisite. It just feels luxurious is the best way I can describe it. However, this is not a fast prop. It's actually a pretty slow prop. If you've flown props like the T-Motor 5143, you know that that's also not a very fast prop, and it has a really mushy throttle feel down low. This prop has a very similar mushy feel. Now, I'll talk about throttle range more a little bit later, but now let's talk about the control. Probably because it has a very soft throttle feel, it's also doing something to the control of the prop because this prop just happens to smooth out every stick input you give it. It just feels so nice to fly in the air. It does not have any kind of a sharp response at all. However, the quad does not feel unresponsive. It actually feels very responsive, but it somehow just smooths all your movements together. If you've flown firmwares or props or whatever, and your quad felt very robotic, and if you don't mix your yaw and your roll together perfectly, you get this weird frame shifting motion that looks kind of odd in video. This prop doesn't have that. It doesn't do that at all. I can't even make it do that if I tried. That's really the magic of this prop. The throttle control and that control smoothing. And those two together makes me understand why Johnny decided to put his name on this prop or wanted his name on this prop. It does fly really, really nice. However, it, unfortunately, not everything is beautiful. While the top speed is not very high, that doesn't really matter. We're usually not flying super fast in acro, so it's whatever. The problem is that the efficiency of this prop is just not that great. It's not bad, but it's definitely below average. And it's not so much the flight time, because two, two and a half minutes is perfectly fine, fine flight time. I, I don't really expect a whole lot more. However, the part that really gets me is that I, I fly around tight quarters. However, sometimes, not sometimes, a lot of times I just like moving quick and I like maintaining a quick pace. And that's where this prop really suffers. It struggles to maintain speed, any kind of speed, for any notable amount of time. Now, when I spoke to the, prop the flight engineer of this prop, he told me that this prop was designed with the with a 2306-1600 kV in mind. So it was specifically designed for 2306 and 1600 kV. And that's pretty low kV. And the reason why I'm not giving this prop a break is that is because most motors in 6S are not 1600 kV, and I personally prefer 1800 kV. And if you push past that 1600 kV RPM, the prop really draws a lot more amps. It's kind of getting into the AVAN prop territory in terms of amps and efficiency, but definitely not anywhere close to the AVAN prop. And that's really its only flaw, which is really frustrating because overall it's such an exquisite prop to fly and it feels so nice and it is the prop to compare against all other props. And when you do fly it, you fly other props and you're just like, oh, this isn't smooth, this isn't as nice. However, there are ways to mimic that, and I'm going to talk about that in a second, but let's move on to this prop. And uh, this is the, the HQ 4.8 by who knows what by 4 prop. It's a 4.8 inch quad blade prop. There haven't been too many quad blade props in time. There, I think there's about, I've tried, I think, four, five. Five quad blade props I've tried that I can remember, and all of them have similar properties. They all have 
incredible control across the board. Throttle control, control like actual stick input control, every kind of control is sky high. They're also all very slow. They're also all very high amp draw. They're also all very quiet. So these are the attributes of a quad play problem. This is no different. So when you're watching me fly here, first of all, you notice the noise. It's higher pitch, which I personally think sounds really awesome because it sounds like a like a suit like a, a turbocharger. <laughs> so it's really cool. It's exceptionally quiet. And even though this is the second flight and I'm all jittery still, uh, it's I'm not afraid. Like nobody can hear me. I can't even hear the quad after 30, 40 feet unless I'm listening specifically for the quad. So that's really really nice. And something else you're noticing is that, you're probably noticing, is that I'm much, much smoother with this prop. Not only because this is the second time around flying. I've flown these, these, these props a lot with batteries, but not. I've flown these props a lot. The quad blade props are just, just so good at so many things. They just suck at speed and they suck at being efficient. And what I want to show here is that the flight time I'm getting on this quad blade prop is comparable to the Johnny prop. Now, I'm showing you my OSD feed as well as the flight footage, and um, I don't stop flying when the voltage alarm comes on. I kind of just take that as a suggestion. I actually wait till I feel a waver in my throttle until I stop flying, and that's when I actually land. So. The landing point for each of these, I'm using the same battery on all of them, however, there I have a bunch of the same battery, and I've used the batteries back and forth across all these props. The Johnny prop is just not that efficient. It's really unfortunate. It's not so bad that you wouldn't fly it, but it's not as good as it could potentially be, so it's just unfortunate. Now let's take a look at the Gemfan 5146.6 prop yet again. So among all the prototype props, I spoke about this prop in the previous video, but among all the prototype props that I have right now, this is my preferred prototype prop, and that's for a couple reasons. So I'm going to play some flight footage for you. So this prop is exceptionally efficient at moving through the air. It is a 5.1 inch prop, and I have tended to notice that 5.1 inch props seem to have better efficiency. I might be fooling myself, I don't know, but I seem to get more flight time with 5.1 inches. I have a hard time believing that 0.1 inches is really gonna make a difference, but hey, I'm not really that sure. Anyways, this prop is exceptionally good at moving through the air, like actually flying through the air. So it, it's gonna be a really great race prop. Unfortunately, it is a four gram prop, so it doesn't have the same durability as a doll prop or the thick or thick previous Azure props, which I think are better for racing anyways. But it does feel really, really nice in the air, and it has great grip, it has everything good about it. The downsides about this prop are two things. Number one, it has that kind of robotic feel to it that I spoke about the Johnny prop that doesn't have, and that's only by comparison to the Johnny prop. And I know you can't see it in this video feed because I've I've actually done things to alter that, and so that's what I'm going to talk about in a second. But the other issue with this prop is that it does have that hump of power, kind of low in the throttle range, that does sort of ruin the ability to pull out of dives super smoothly. It is just more touchy. Compared to some other props, it has more power and more speed and more efficiency. It, it's really, in a, it's, it's, a, it's a surprising combination of features in a prop. And the reason why I'm showing it now is because I'm going to tell you how I mimic the feel of the Johnny prop in this prop. Now, I can't get it perfect, but I can get it pretty close. So, first and foremost, if you just chop the top 70 points off, oh, sorry, the top 30 points off your throttle maximum range, you'll chop all the power off the top, and now it has less power. And the less power of a full quad has more throttle resolution because you have a longer stick travel to modulate the throttle, so it's easier to manage your throttle. In, in general, it just smooth things out when you try to pull out of dives and things. So that alone kind of gave me a lot of that throttle feel that I missed with the Johnny Prop back. And then the other thing is I turned my feed forward down to below 20, like around 17, 18. I know that's really, really low. It does make the stick feel kind of mushy. However, it feels really smooth. <laughs> it feels a lot smoother and it really does smooth things out a lot. So those two things in combination can sort of mimic the feel of the Johnny Prop, but definitely not like the Johnny Prop. The Johnny Prop does it all in hardware. It does it in the prop itself. I don't know what it is about the prop, but it is just exceptionally smooth. It is just exceptionally nice on the throttle. Everything about it is just so nice, except for the efficiency. You've also probably already noticed that this flight, I was moving pretty quick, and the flight time was comparable to the Johnny Prop, which I wasn't really moving very quick at all. I was just kind of scouting around. 
And that's really the difference. If I don't push it, I can easily get a solid minute more on this prop compared to the Johnny prop. And it's for that reason that I have a hard time putting the Johnny prop on my quad because an extra minute of flight time is really, really nice. Even if the prop isn't optimal, it's really, really nice. So again, these are really just splitting hairs. Unless you try these props side by side, you can have a hard time really telling a whole lot of things apart. However, when you first put the Johnny prop on, you really notice that super nice feeling to it. And it really does make you feel like you're flying Johnny's video feed. One more last thing I want to throw in there. This prop was developed for a 2306 motor. And when you try it on a 2207 or a 2208, it does feel pretty wonky. The throttle control or the throttle, the way the throttle feels is not the same. And what's really curious is that the Johnny motor is actually a 2207 motor. So I don't, I'm just gonna leave it at that. And um, now this helicopter is destroying all my audio. So thanks very much for watching. Uh, please foster teeth and I'm gonna go inside because it's too windy anymore.